Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the video, man. Silent Mike. Today, we're going to talk about programming, setting yourself up for success in the squat. If you want to get stronger, you want to build your legs, we'll talk about different methodologies and philosophies in programming to get you there. If you want to get involved, be sure to subscribe. Let's see if we can get a thousand likes on this thing. It would help your boy so much. It seems like you guys are liking the new series, talking to the basics of training, trying to give you guys tips to increase your muscle mass, to increase your strength. 3sb.co if you want to grab your clothing needs, man. We got new drops all the time. GoodCompanyDiscord.com if you want to get involved with the community. I'm in there every day chatting with you guys. If you have questions, you want to just hang out, we talk about music, we talk about life, we talk about fitness. So when we're talking about squats, or we're talking about programming in general, kind of for any lift. Why I stay away from making programming videos is because there's a lot of tools that you have to have, more tools than a plumber, to become a good coach and programmer. And when you're doing it, to individualize it, which is a slightly overrated term, but to individualize it, we're using different tools and utilizing different philosophies at separate times to build an overarching system to lead you to our goal. So the things I describe here will be ranges and very general because there's a lot of people that have squatted massive amounts of weights and had very thick thighs, big old donkeys, dumpers, that have done things a million different ways. But I'm gonna to try to explain to you some tools and tips in your programming that work for most people and are probably optimal to get you to where you wanna go. Now, first thing we talk about are the three keys to programming, right? The three kind of scales that we get to tip and turn. We have intensity, which is how heavy something is or how close to your one rep max or how close to failure something is. Um, we have your frequency, which is how often something is practiced or how often something is done. Um, and then we have volume how much is done, how much work you're doing within a workout, a week, a month, a year. The biggest thing is how we manage those depending on your goal of strength or depending on your goal of muscle mass and where you're at in your block or your waves of training to manage fatigue and still make progress. That's where the lineups kind of change between strength and bodybuilding or building muscle, hypertrophy. All three of those can't be all the way turned up. We can't have maximum frequency, training to one rep max and doing, you know, 20 sets of 10 all year round or even in a week, chances are you'll regress, you'll make less progress than you want, or you will get injured, um, or you'll just purely get burnt out and not enjoy yourself. So typically with powerlifting, what I like to do is a higher frequency style training, um, moderate volume and moderate intensity depending. We'll start with the kind of powerlifting basics and then we'll head over to some hypertrophy stuff. For most people, what tends to work is a frequency of two to four times a week for the squat. Now I know that sounds like a big variance, but it really depends on where you're at. And what we wanna find is that sweet spot where you enjoy yourself, you're making progress, and you can still push yourself. If you can make the same progress going twice a week as you would going four times a week, you're gonna be better off going twice a week. Cause then we can save that energy and we can save our mental and physical energy for squats, deadlifts, life, playing video games, studying, whatever else you have to do. If we're plateaued at twice a week, that's when we might bump things up to three or four. But we want the minimum effective dose, right? If we can get the progress with two, we want to stick with two. And a lot of people have. A lot of people make world records and win championships, international, national, etc., squatting twice a week. We're talking about volume and frequent or volume and intensity now. There's something that I enjoy to do. Um, so when we block things out, people call them macro or micro uh, cycles. You can call them waves. You can call them whatever you want, programs, four week blocks, call it whatever you want. But basically we'll map things out three to six weeks at a time and we'll block those out leading up to whatever our goal is. Typically with powerlifting, it's a competition. The further out from a competition with powerlifting uh, is when we'll typically handle slightly uh, more variations, which if you wanna talk about variations and accessories, check our last video on squats. Um, the closer we get to a competition, the more specific we want to be and want to hit the competition style lift, right, for the practice. But even further out, we want to get efficient and be strong and, and confident in our skill, right? Most basketball players are still playing basketball in the offseason. They're not off fishing or playing soccer to get better at basketball. You want to play basketball to get better at basketball. And same goes for the squat. We're talking about rep ranges. You know, my personal opinion is that for powerlifting specifically, in the competition squat or even variations, I don't like to go much above six, seven, eight reps. Now you can build strength and you can build muscle doing more reps, but I think the risk to reward and risk, meaning just pure recovery and mental fortitude, you'll get more sore and more fatigued doing sets of 10, 11, 12, 
that it's just not necessary. And if we're squatting two, three, four times a week, handling sets of six, seven, eight is plenty to build muscle, hit different muscle fiber types, and still take a break from the heavier loads. Within a week, say we're squatting three times a week to keep things as simple as we can, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Within that, I typically have kind of three different style of trainings and three intents of the week. One intent of the week would be a heavy day, and we call that like a strength day where we might handle sets of one to maybe five, depending on those blocks. The second training day, I like to call maybe a practice day or a recovery day or a rest day. That's when both the intensities are slightly lower and um, sometimes the volume itself is slightly lower. The last day is typically more of like a hypertrophy day or a rep day or a volume day. So what does that look like when we're far away? So when that's far away from a meet, that might look like taking a nice single on our strength day maybe a double or triple at an RPE 678. And then we're doing anywhere from three to five sets of one to five, somewhere in the similar pocket. Sets uh, RPE of seven, eight, maybe even nine, depending on the wave. The speed day would be something like handling five, six, seven sets of one to five. And we're handling anywhere from 60 to 80%, moving those really efficiently, really fast, really strong. On the third day, the hypertrophy day, then we might be handling anywhere from sets of one to four uh, reps of six to eight, and we're gonna handle anywhere from 50, 60, 70%, pushing ourselves a little bit to raise our general strength, to raise our general uh, work capacity. Now, you take those numbers and you just start to elevate all of them each block we get closer to a meet. The single on our strength day becomes more of a seven, eight, nine, maybe even a 10. The back down sets become sets of one, two, and three, turning up the RPE and in intensity. The speed days become more like five sets of two, and we start to turn up that intensity, handling six, seven, and eight RPE. And then the hypertrophy days drop from sets of eight, and now we're maybe doing sets of five and six, again, turning up the, hyper, uh, the intensity as we slowly raise the amount of weight we lift. As the volume goes down, the sets and reps, we turn that intensity up to build up the strength. Anywhere from four, six, 10 weeks out from a meet is when we start to flip that switch from kind of building with reps, sets, and volume, and we'll start to turn the intensity up and volume slightly down. Um, how you do that depends on the individual. Some people do it much closer to a meet than others, but the general idea is that we'll take fatigue away to allow us to express that strength best we can, right? Hopefully during our training blocks, we're in a certain state of being tired because we're working so hard squatting three times a week. But eventually, you wanna to adapt to that stimulus, you wanna to adapt to that hard work and get to a baseline of recovery that now you can perform your best. In training, the goal is to adapt, cause fatigue, and really make your body work for that in fatigue. In competition, the goal is to minimize that fatigue while keeping our fitness as high as we can to allow ourselves to lift the most amount of weight possible. Again, there's a bunch of different strategies, but generally speaking, closer to the meet, we'll start to take away some volume, and turn up that intensity to prep ourselves both mentally and physically to handle the heaviest weights we ever have. Now for accessories, right, which we've talked about in the past videos, my main goal is always to build general strength, to build general muscle, and have that baseline of fitness. Those general programming will also wave sometimes um, to build the most amount of muscle we need to get pretty close to failure. You need to push yourself in whatever exercise you're doing, um, but the rep range doesn't matter Super particularly, you can build muscle both in sets of five and in sets of 10, but you do have different levels of fatigue because you're using different muscles and different muscle fiber types and different loads, right? So going to a close to failure with a set of five will have a different stimulus mentally and physically than going close to failure with a set of 10. And that's also why we can block those out. Um, I tend to just do some old school linear periodization when it comes to stuff like that. So my accessories, both myself and a lot of people I coach will do a block or two of sets of 10, you know, RPE 7, 8, 9. Then we'll do a block or two of sets of 7 to 8, RPE, you know, 7, 8, 9, um, and kind of wave back and forth. Um, both with our variations in the off season, we can switch them up block to block. Accessories are something I typically don't switch up that often. We find a handful, uh, we find that feel good for the athlete, you get a good mind muscle connection and they target muscles that we need to assist and build for long-term strength goals, and we'll just hammer those. So I know that's a lot of information without a lot of specifics because the specifics come when the individual athlete has um, particular things that help them 
or hinder them in their progress. And that's where this large toolbox come into play. And I have experience and coaching knowledge that allows me to kind of play those. You know, we're really playing chess, not checkers. So it gets a little bit complicated. I understand why people want to learn about programming because they really enjoy lifting, coaching, and want to progress. But the truth is the majority of people just need a basic understanding. And then the best athletes in the world just follow what their coaches tell them. And that's the honest truth. We, to be the best athlete you can, it's often not being the best or most knowledgeable coach you can. They don't go hand in hand. To be the best athlete you can, you almost want to turn your brain off, put trust in your coach, and just put in the work. But, of always, I want to help you guys. I want to spread the knowledge that I've learned over the last 15 years in the game. So hopefully that helps you a little bit. Appreciate you guys so much, man. New videos every single Monday. New content every single day. It helps so much if you like this thing and share it. 3sb.co. Be a part of something big in yourself, man. We over me. Salam Mike. We're out of this one.